Hey YouTube, how's it going? I'm Mark and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. So today I'm setting up my bow to be able to use it this season. And as you guys know, I had shoulder surgery, so I'm shooting this thing at a super low poundage. And in order for me to get enough power out of this or momentum out of this to penetrate through wild game, I'm gonna try and build some really heavy arrows based on Dr. Ashby's research, which I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of, and then we're gonna go through the process of building these heavy arrows. Stay tuned. So you may have heard me mention this guy before, and if you've been watching videos on YouTube, you've probably heard of Ranch Ferry. This guy is a, uh, an archery researcher and what he does is he researches uh, arrow penetration and flight paths uh, based on different arrow and bow setups and what he's always talking about is that heavy arrows are the way to go but he doesn't really get into why it is that heavy arrows penetrate so much better than light arrows and there's a lot of reasons behind that but the main reason is that heavy arrows that move slower are dealing with a lot less drag and drag is the one variable that changes based on the speed of an arrow. Because there's obviously a lot of things to consider uh, between heavy and light arrows. They both have their advantages. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about both of those advantages so that you can make up your mind for yourself about which route you wanna go. So Ranch Ferry is always harping on about the work that Dr. Ashby has done dealing with the penetration of an arrow. And you know, the work that he has done is really quite phenomenal. He looked at thousands of animals that were killed with a bow um, and how those arrows penetrated. Um, and it's really the only research out there of its kind. So before we go any further, it's important to understand the meanings of some of the words that we're going to be using. One of them is momentum. Momentum is a term used for an object's willingness to stay in motion. And so momentum that is, can be gained by weight or by speed, but momentum that is gained by weight has less willing, willingness to be brought to a stop, which means that it's more willing to stay in motion when you apply drag force to it. Now when you increase a projectile's velocity, the drag increases exponentially. So it's not uh, you know, the, the amount of drag exerted on an arrow of a certain weight is not the same if you speed that arrow up. So faster objects experience more drag than slower objects. Now, a fast and light arrow might actually have a little bit more momentum coming off of the bow because the bow is a little bit more efficient with those lighter objects. But that momentum, uh, because it is gained by higher speed and not by higher weight, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to bring it to a halt, uh, and so drag forces can slow down uh, a fast light arrow a lot better than a slow heavy arrow. It doesn't matter what draw weight your bow is at, this information applies to any bow. If my bow is shooting at 52 pounds with a draw length of 27.5 inches, and that's able to put down a certain amount of energy um, or an impulse into that arrow, then doesn't that stay the same no matter what arrow you put into it? And even though there are a few different forces that uh, that act on that arrow that cause slight variations, for the most part, you're right. Uh, if you're shooting a lightweight arrow out of this or a heavy arrow, the momentum is actually gonna be really similar. Um, the kinetic energy will change. Kinetic energy is simply like a static state of the energy that is contained within an arrow. And it actually is a really useful uh, measure of how hard an arrow is hitting its target. When you're bow hunting, you're actually killing an animal by causing major hemorrhaging. And the way you do that is by severing arteries and damaging vital organs. And so what you actually want is you want the arrow to not have a hard impact. You want it to slide right through that animal as effortless as possible so that you can sever all of those arteries and hit those vitals. So kinetic energy is actually not a very good way of looking at the performance of an arrow. Instead, you want something that has a directional aspect to it, and that means that you have to use force, because force is mass times acceleration, and acceleration has a direction. So think about an arrow, if this is the side of a deer, an arrow coming at a deer has a certain amount of force 
that it is going to apply to that deer when it impacts. As it impacts, those drag forces, as it passes through, those drag forces are moving in the opposite direction. So we've got the arrow force going this way, the drag force going the other way. Now here's the thing, drag uh, is dependent on the speed of the projectile. So an arrow that's moving at 150 feet per second, which is pretty typical of like a, a, tradi a traditional style bow, um, is gonna have half, no, sorry, one quarter of the uh, drag force applied to it as an arrow that's moving at 300 feet per second because the drag increases exponentially. And an easy way to sort of uh, picture this is if you're in a car driving at 30 miles an hour, right? You're just driving around some city roads, put your hand out of the window and you hardly feel any drag on your hand, right? It's a light breeze. You don't have to really do anything to hold your hand in that position. Now go up to 60 miles an hour on the highway, stick your hand out the window again, and suddenly you'll notice that you're really having to push to hold your hand in that position because the drag has increased by four times, even though the speed has only increased by two times. And the same thing applies to an arrow. Now wind is a lot less, or sorry, air is a lot less viscous than a deer. So it's not four times, it's actually uh, a lot more than that. And I don't know the exact numbers, but a fast arrow is gonna have a, an exponential amount of drag applied to it as it passes through compared to a slow arrow. So when you consider that, you can still maintain the same impulse from your bow in an arrow, um, but one that is gaining its momentum through heavy weight, which is going to slow down the arrow, is gonna have a lot less drag applied to it as it passes through a deer. And that is why you get so much more penetration with a heavy arrow. Now, after hearing all of that, you're probably thinking, well, then why the heck would anybody shoot a lightweight arrow? You should just shoot a solid steel arrow because it's gonna be super heavy and it's gonna penetrate like crazy. And that's true. The only problem is that if you're shooting a really heavy arrow, especially out of a bow like mine that's currently only set up at about 50 pounds, it's gonna have an incredible arc. You're gonna shoot it and it's gonna go like this. Um, and that causes some problems when you're shooting uh, you know, at an animal and you're trying to uh, get a really accurate shot and get good shot placements so that you can hit those vitals because it becomes a lot harder, especially if you're estimating uh, the distance that that animal is, it becomes a lot harder to get a good, um, accurate shot. And that's where those lightweight arrows come into play because they have a lot less drop. It's a very straight trajectory. Um, and so it makes it a lot easier to, to make a good shot. So you kind of have to think about, you know, what is more important to me, the penetration or the flight trajectory, or are we going to go somewhere in the middle where we get a little bit of both? And so, in my case, because I'm shooting such a uh, light draw weight, I'm actually going to go with a really heavy arrow. Um, I'm going to try and build something that's about 600 grains, and this means that the arrow is only going to be flying at about 200 feet per second. But it does mean that I'm going to have to dial back my, uh, my ethical shot range to about 30 yards. Whereas so before I get into this arrow build, I just want to point out I've done a lot of research to figure out which components I want to use in my arrow builds. And a lot of those components are based on some simple rules that Dr. Ashby actually uh, published um, that basically, uh, you know, minimize the amount of drag and uh, um, th that minimize the amount of drag that an arrow experiences as it passes through an animal. So with these things in mind, I chose my components. And again, if you're interested in building a similar kind of setup to what I'm talking about in this video, there's gonna be links down in the description of all the items I'm talking about so you can buy them yourself. <clears throat> First off, I'm using the Victory Archery Vaps Elite. I don't know if you can see that. It's not in focus and it probably won't get in focus. Um, the, the Vaps Elite shafts are great. They're Super thin, I think they're like the four millimeter shafts. So this is like the thinnest shaft that you can get. And they're coated with this like ceramic uh, coating that makes them super slick and is supposed to reduce friction. So that addresses that um, rule six and seven. Uh, so that's, that's a great arrow choice. 
Um, also, because they're carbon shafts and they're relatively lightweight, it's going to allow me to put a lot more weight to the front, which is going to increase FOC, which actually wasn't one of his rules, but Dr. Ashby learned about that later on in his research and found that FOC really incre increases grouping and improves aeroflight. As for the broadhead that I'm going to be using, before this moment I've always used mechanical broadheads and I'm uh, really starting to move away from those. I'm still going to be using them a little bit in my crossbow this season, um, but for this particular aero build I'm switching to fixed blades and the blade that I have chosen is the Magnus Stinger buzz cut. Now uh, Dr. Ashby suggested something that has a, a more similar profile to something like the, um, the tough heads. Um, I'll show you a picture right here. Um, and these tough heads obviously have a great mechanical advantage. They're super long and skinny and they're about one inch cutting diameter so they can penetrate really well. The reason that I chose to go with the Stinger is because it still has a pretty long um, shape and that, that relatively uh, shallow, not steep slope. Um, but it also has the option of getting these bleeder veins which are off to the side. Um, and that's kind of important to me because I feel like as those bleeder veins go through, they open up that wound channel just a little bit more. And that really allows that blood to come out of there uh, and flow really well. And it prevents clotting from happening. So for my own peace of mind, I really wanted an arrow that had, uh, you know, more than a single cutting plane. So like a single blade has like two sides and it cuts a straight line. I like either a, a three-way cutting uh, surface, or in this case, it's going to be four ways. So it's going to cut through. It's really going to open up that that channel and and allow for massive hemorrhaging. So that's really more for me. Uh, and you'll have to do some homework about which broadheads you like. But this is what I landed on because it's relatively uh, it's a relatively cheap broadhead that meets most of the requirements that I was looking for. This brings us to rule number one, and that's maximize bow efficiency by using the heaviest possible arrow. And that's really what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, and in order to accomplish that, I bought these guys right here. These are the ethics insert outsert system uh, that are specially designed for this thin arrow shaft. Um, and these um, both of these together are 180 grains that you are basically adding to the front of the arrow. And as you can see, there's little like tick marks on this insert and those are 10 grain increments. So you can take your pliers and break those off to change the weight of your insert uh, so that you can tune it uh, to the best uh, arrow trajectory um, and uh, arrow flight. And I'm gonna show you how I would do that. Sun just came out. It's about to get hot as hell out here. Anyway, this is what we got going on. So, got my target and I put it up on this cooler because I want to raise it up uh, so that I'm shooting uh, as level as possible. I've got my paper suspended from just some packing tape that I hung up in the middle of this ladder right here. And I'm going to be shooting from this chair right here. And like I said, I wanted to make sure that I'm shooting as level as possible, and that's why that um, target is sitting up on a cooler. So I'm going to sit right here. I'm about three yards away from the paper, and then uh, the paper is about a yard away from the target. And all you want to make sure of with that is that when the arrow impacts, that it is out of the paper. Because you don't want, if it impacts the target when it's like this, you're going to get all kinds of crazy tears. So that's really it. So now I'm gonna cycle through these different uh, point weights and see which fly the best. And uh, yeah. I've been messing with this bow for like the last two days. And I can tell you, if you want to do this kind of tune and make sure that your bow is shooting right, I can tell you that it's not going to be take. It's it's not going to be easy. It's going to take a while. Um, you know, doing a paper tune really tells you like how messed up your bow is and how it's shooting. And uh, honestly, I've never had it dialed in as well as I have it now. Um, and it, I'm really impressed with it. 
uh, I basically uh, discovered that my my uh, arrow rest wasn't in the right place, so I moved that around, got it to where I was shooting bullet holes, um, you know, at like four feet away uh, through paper, and then uh, but then I backed it up to like five yards or something, and it was still ripping, you know, like two inch tears, uh, and that's bare shaft, of course. Now most people probably don't need to bear shaft at further distances um it's really just nitpicky but i just kind of wanted to try it out um so i moved back there and i i started messing with the the rest a little bit more i maxed it out at the top and realized that my knocking point my d loop wasn't at the right spot i had to bring it down a little bit so i cut it off i put a new one on um, and i shot it again and now i'm basically shooting bullet holes at um you know five yards so this thing's like really on point so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go through the process one last time shoot all those different um uh point weights and i'm gonna try and find out you know which arrow gives me the most uh versatile range of weights that i can use um, and that's the one that i'm gonna build my arrow around that right there is the best bullet hole that's probably the second best um, this guy right here, I'm pretty sure I torqued that one, so I'm going to ignore that. But, uh, so this is with the 200 grain, uh, point and the 350 spine arrow, so it kind of makes sense. That's the lightest point with the flimsiest arrow, um, so it kind of makes sense that it, it likes that one. Um, but, I mean, I'm shooting these at, like, five yards away, and you're supposed to paper tune at, like, one or two, and so, you know, these are really good results. Uh, really for all of these points and I wonder how much of these tears is caused just by me not necessarily the arrow flight so since doing the paper tune with this bow and these heavier arrow setups I basically got to the point where this bow is shooting these heavy arrows like it's making a bullet hole in the paper with pretty much every arrow weight that I or every point weight that I put on it so Dr. Ashby suggests that you should use the heaviest possible arrow that you feel has an acceptable trajectory. So I came up with a little test of what I think is an appropriate way of assessing this. Since the point of this arrow is to hunt with it, I'm going to try and simulate a scenario that you might run into while hunting. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go, I'm going to shoot at different distances 10, 20, 30, and 40 yards, I'm gonna shoot this heavy arrow. Then I'm gonna go to the target and I'm gonna stick this light arrow in as a placeholder because I only built one of the heavy arrows for the time being. Um, then I'm gonna simulate the situation in which you're in your tree stand, you range a deer, and then that deer, by the time you're ready to shoot, that deer has moved a couple yards towards you or a couple yards away from you. And then you just have to put the pin on it and send the arrow and hope for the best. So I want to know if I move forward or backwards by like two yards, how much that's going to change the impact point of this heavy arrow. So let's find out. This is going to be at 10 yards. I'm going to stick that arrow right in there. And now I'm going to come, I'm going to move back two yards. As you can see, I only impacted like an inch lower. So at 10 yards, definitely not a problem. This is gonna be at 20 yards. Stick this arrow in there as a placeholder. Now let's, I'm going to move back to 22 yards and shoot it. Alright, so there you have it at 22 yards, hitting only about an inch low again. So, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, you know, there might be a little bit of error, error just from the way I'm shooting, but still, even if I shot a little bit high on that one, even if it hit two inches low, I still don't care. That's good enough. Now let's go to 30 yards. Let's 
So I'm hitting a teeny bit low at 30 yards pretty consistently, so I'm gonna have to play with that pin a little bit. But in any case, that hole, that's kind of where I'm impacting. The last shot I did was right here, so the same exact height. So now I'm gonna go to 32. So at 30 yards, I'm hitting about probably three inches, three inches low. Um, I think that's about where I draw the line. So, um, and, and I'm okay with that because I basically told myself because I'm shooting such a low poundage with this bow that I would not allow myself to shoot at a deer or any game for that matter at more than 30 yards unless I can take the time to range it know exactly what range it's at and then set my sight but just on the fly shooting 30 is going to be my maximum and a three inch uh, difference if the deer moves two yards forward or backward I'm okay with that uh, because the fact of the matter is that the target we're shooting at is like eight inches so you know if I notice a deer moved a little bit closer than the 30 yards that I ranged it at I'm obviously going to shoot a tiny bit higher um, it, to make up for that difference, but knowing you know how much of a difference it's going to make at just two yards is really going to help me, um, you know, feel comfortable with taking shots like that. And this is perfectly acceptable to me. Uh, but any more than that, and I'd say I'd have to get a lighter arrow or turn up the poundage on my bow. All right, guys, I've seen enough. It looks like these heavy arrows are going to do the trick. So I'm going to go ahead and order all the components to build these heavy arrows. And I'll put another video up uh, in a week or two once I get all those arrows made. And then I'm going to walk you through the process of knock tuning and getting all those arrows built uh, and figuring out which ones are the best so I can hunt with them. I hope you guys thought this information was useful. And if you like the content of this video, make sure you give it that thumbs up. And if you have any questions, drop a comment down below. And as I mentioned before, go check out Ranch Fair. He's got some awesome information about all this stuff that I was just talking about. And if you're interested in supporting the channel, go check out our Patreon page. You can find that at patreon.com slash swamp and stomp. You can sign up for a membership there that'll get you cool exclusive content as well as some cool merch. With that, I'd like to thank you guys for watching Swamp and Stomp. Make sure you click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you guys next time.